Hi, this is Jack Lykowski, and welcome to the sixth installment of Unfriendly Territory. And this we're going to be looking at unfriendly payback. We've all had payback from time to time. We've all received it. And I bet if we're honest, if we're really, really honest, we've also given it out. I remember sitting in the back seat of my parents' Chevy Impala, and my brother would poke me. Maybe I poked him first. That's immaterial. But no matter who started it, the other one of us would poke him back. And then they'd poke back. And it got a little bit more uh, energy with it and poking and poking. Now it was a double or a triple. And then it was a full fight, slap, 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 slap. But we looked like the Three Stooges. But remember, it was all based on payback. There's a very famous scene in The Godfather when Marlon Brando is sitting with the five families after his son has been exiled back to Sicily, to Italy, and his other older brother, older son, Sonny, has been killed. And he's talking about the fact that he's willing to forgive. But when he brings his son, Michael Corleone, back, he says, if he hangs himself, if a policeman shoots him, if he gets hold, hit by a bolt of lightning, he will not forgive. There's going to be payback. And that's the way it is in our life. We all have uh, payback, and we're moving forward in our series together because last week we talked about how Pharaoh, remember, had a dream. There were seven years of fat cows and fat crops, and then there were seven years of uh, no rain, and there, the cows, the skinny cows ate up the fat ones and the thin gaunt grain ate up the fat one, and how this was a dream from God. And Joseph interpreted the dream, and Pharaoh listened, and God spoke in and through that, and he appointed Joseph to be the prime minister, the second in command. And he had gone through the land, was collecting and saving grain, and now that the years of famine had arrived. And the famine had arrived not only in Egypt, but also throughout all of the Middle East, and there was no water. And when Jacob learned, this is Genesis 42, learned that there was grain in Egypt, he said to his sons, why do you just keep looking at each other? Have you ever done this as, as a parent? Just see your kids looking at one another as if, oh, I don't know. Now, we as parents do something, it's called the look. Marianne's mom had what she calls the look. You could be sitting at the dinner table and they would be having a very friendly conversation. And if one of the kids said something that was a little bit edgy, a little bit too much, they didn't scream, they didn't yell, they got the look. And Jacob is now saying, I'm giving you the look because he continues, I have heard that there is grain in Egypt. Go down there and buy some for us so that we may live and not die. You notice the boys haven't done anything. They're looking around. Where's the food coming from? Oh, I don't know. Well, maybe you know. Oh, I don't know. And Jacob gets a text or an email or he sees it on the news. He gets a tweet and he says, there's food down there. You boys need to go down and get some food. But Jacob did not send Benjamin in Genesis 42 for Joseph's brother. They didn't send him with the others because he was afraid of the harm that might come to him. You see, the, the brothers, Joseph and Benjamin, were of the favored wife. The other boys were chopped liver. They weren't worth anything compared to those two. And, and Jacob says, I've got an idea. You guys go, but I'm keeping Benjamin back. And he has this great idea of sending the boys, but he has a less than great idea and saying, I'm keeping Benjamin back. Remember why had the boys really hated Joseph? Because he not only was proud and arrogant, but Jacob favored him above the others. He hadn't learned this lesson. So Israel's sons were among those who went to buy grain. For there was a famine in the land of Canaan. There was a great famine and they went down. And I'm sure they didn't just go alone, that they joined the list and the lines. Everybody heading down. I remember when Hurricane Charlie hit us here in Central Florida. 
We didn't have any lights. We stood in line for gas. We had to go to another town and stand in line for gas. We stood in line for water. The, ro the restaurants and the grocery stores didn't have any food because it all spoiled. We didn't have any food because it went bad. We were eating canned goods and Pop-Tarts. And that's what it was like. But these boys got down there and they stood in line. Think about the lines that were at the last uh, release of the iPhone 6. Lines around the block. That's what it was like. Now, Joseph was the governor of the land, the person who sold grain to all its people. So when Joseph's brothers arrived, they bowed down to him with their faces to the ground. You see, he is now the prime minister. He is the man. Everybody's got to come to Joseph. He doesn't delegate this. He delegated the collection and storage and the management of the grain. But when it came time to selling it, he was going to make sure personally that Pharaoh got a good price. And the brothers come after waiting in this line. They come after all this waiting. What do they do? They bow down with their faces to the ground. And as soon as Joseph saw his brothers, he recognized them. It reignited the memories. I'm sure there are things when you see something or hear something or smell something, the memories just overtake you. And that's what happened. And he remembered all of those things. But there was something else he remembered. Remember last week, he had a boy, Manasseh, which means God made me forget all my trouble and all my father's household. He saw the boys. He remembered what happened to him. But I bet he also remembered God's goodness. He had given birth to Manasseh. And we talked about how you and I need to give birth to Manasseh. So he sees the boys and he pretended to be a stranger and spoke harshly to them. Where do you come from? He asked. Did you see the most important word there is pretend? It's like an actor. The actor doesn't believe what they're saying. They're not necessarily conservative or liberal, Republican or Democrat. It doesn't matter. They're an actor. They're pretending. And that's exactly what he does. He pretends. And then as he's talking, he remembered his dream about them. Remember the dream that all of his brothers, all 11 of them were going to bow down to him. And I wondered if he went one, two, three, four. Oh, there's only 10. This is not the fulfillment of the dream. And I don't see my brother, Benjamin, here. So he knew this wasn't the fulfillment of it. He saw the 10 of them and he hatches a plan. He said to them, you are spies. You have come to see where our land is unprotected. Now, you think about spies, we think about James Bond and other people. But think about the job of a spy. The spy is to find and to take. The spy is to take. The, all James Bond, James Bond was to take secrets, take money, take other people. They were takers. And he said, you're coming to look at the unprotected. This is like the door where the door is open, where we're weak. You're coming to look for that. But they replied, your servants were 12 brothers, the sons of one man who lived in the land of Canaan. The youngest is now with our father, and one is no more. This is an amazing kind of transition. Joseph looks at them and says, you're spies, you're takers. But they say, no, we're not spies, which is the truth. We are servants. We are here to give. And he says that the one brother is no more. Have you ever driven out west? There are some places where there's just no nothing. I remember when we moved to Arizona, we left a city in Texas, and I was looking for a station on the radio. I turned on the radio and hit the scan, and it just looped and looped because there were no stations within any, within any mileage. When you come out of the eastern exit of the south rim of the Grand Canyon, and you start heading to Flagstaff, there's a sign out there that says, next gas station, 124 miles. That's what they're saying. No more. He's gone. Long way off. We have nowhere where we have no idea where he is. But Joseph did this to test him. This isn't a simple test where you fill in the, you know, the little holes with the number two pencils. It isn't fill in the blanks kind of a thing. 
This kind of test is to see what's in their heart, what's on the inside. All of those other tests are outside, they're mental. He wants to see what's in their hearts. And he moves on and gives, says, he gives them the test and what happens? They proceed to do it in Genesis 42, 20. This is huge. He tells them what to do and what happens. They start the process of doing it. They start listening and they start obeying. They listen to him. This is a big change in their hearts. They hear direction and they begin to take it. Their father, Jacob, gives instructions, says, you go down there. And they say, well, I don't know about that. And then they say, here they're saying, yeah, we're going to do it. We're going to listen. We're going to obey. And as they start to do this, they said to one another, surely we are being punished because of our brother. We saw how distressed he was when he pleaded with us for his life but we would not listen. That's why this distress has come. You see, they are, he hears, they hear the words of Joseph and they immediately make the connection. This isn't an accident. This is coming back at us. We wouldn't listen. We ignored, we put our fingers in our ear. We turned away, we wouldn't listen. And they're saying, now we're being punished for this thing. And you see, the interesting thing is that Joseph understood it because when he spoke to his brothers initially, he spoke through an interpreter. But he hears them talking to himself and he hears it without an interpreter. He hears and understands what's going on in their hearts and what they're saying. They're not trying to position themselves. They hear the, he hears the words and he turned away from them and he began to weep. He can't take it anymore. He had to get his emotions in check. This was something a man just didn't do in public. He heard them. He said, they are connecting what, he, what they did to him and their hearts are beginning to melt. And then they go on the trip. And at the end of the first day, they open up their bags and they see the, the grain, but also the money. They again see this and they say their hearts sank and they turned to each other trembling and said, what is this that God has done to us? Their hearts sank. Again, this wasn't in front of Joseph, but it didn't matter. They saw evidence. What is God doing? We don't understand. We have now gone, we've got it, but the money's here. What is God doing? Where is he? You see, Joseph had every legal right to say, throw them all in jail and throw away the key. Kill them in front of me. Execute them. Put them into slave labor. But he didn't. He allowed God to work payback. There are four principles of that that we're going to look at. First is revenge. This is Romans 12, 19. Do not repay anyone evil for evil. Do not take revenge, my dear friends, but leave room for God's wrath, for it is written, it is mine to avenge. I will repay, says the Lord. God says, you leave it to me. When you and I want to smack somebody upside the head or give him a kick in the pants as revenge, God says, hands off. If we put our hands on that, he'll say, fine, it's yours. But the proper response is hands off. Let God work. Let God do it. Secondly, we are to take time for reflection. Isaiah 40, 31 says, But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. He says, those who hope. Hope is not like, oh, I got hope. Oh, now I don't. No, hope is a process. Hope takes time. Hope works through time. You've got to give God time. You can't say, oh, God, you've got so long. It's my wristwatch is going off. My alarm is going off. It's time. No, God has the timing to do it. Third is don't be in a rush. Deuteronomy 8.2 says, remember how the Lord your God led you all the way in the wilderness for how long? These 40 years to humble and test you in order to know what was in your heart 
It takes time. When Tom Hanks played in the movie Castaways, remember he worked for FedEx and he kept bringing out this clock and said, time is our enemy. It is a, it is a slave taskmaster. It is unforgiving. We are not to be in that kind of rush when it comes time for God to work in their lives. But how about working in our lives? Do we want God just to snap us? No, we want him to be kind and gracious. And that's what we have to give to them. And lastly, the fourth idea is that we are, it is a road. Jesus says in Luke 6, 27 and 28, but to you who are listening, I say, love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you and pray for those who mistreat you. Because isn't that what we want? Aren't you and I guilty of all those things? Haven't you and I done things wrong, said things that are wrong, done hurtful, hateful things to other people? Some of it unintentionally, but if we're honest, we've done it intentionally too. It's a road, and we have to allow ourselves the chance for the road to turn. Yeah, they, they hit us. We need to turn that into prayer. They, they hurt us. We need to turn that into loving kindness. We need to pray for them. Isn't that what we want people to do for us? Of course it is. Those are the things we want. That's the way we want to be treated. You see, the idea of payback is something that says you can't handle it. And so our job is to open our hands and release it. We, ha we cannot hold it in our fist and say, God, I'm holding this hurt in my hand because it will burn us. It'll burn our hand. It'll burn our heart. It'll burn our lives. God says, release it to me. You see, because that's the whole point of being a Jesus follower. Being a Jesus follower says, I'm going to give you control of every area of my life. And when people hurt us, and they will hurt us, part of that idea we say, Jesus, I just got hurt. You're the Lord of all creation. You have all knowledge. You know I just got hit upside the head. You know how much it hurts because people hurt you. You were betrayed. And your payback was the payback for my sin and your sin by dying on the cross and being raised for me. Will you pray with me? Our Father and our God, I thank you that your payback was a cross that was followed up by the resurrection. May our payback be to extend grace because that's what we got. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks for listening. God bless and bye-bye.